students don't like being told what to think. And a lot of times the, the teachers are telling them, you know, this is the way you need to understand this. And they want to they want to have their own understanding interpretation. They don't want somebody else to tell them what to think about it. They're, they're smart. I would say students today are smart. They, they're very savvy about marijuana. I mean, they've grown up with marijuana. They're California teenagers. Uh, they've smoked it. Um, some of them are in favor of legalization. Some of them say, I don't, I don't care if it's legalized. I get, I get marijuana and I smoke it. And, I, I, I like it the way it is, and uh, so they were they were really honest and direct, and and some of them who smoke it regularly and like it also said, we well, you know I've had some bad experiences on marijuana, and, uh, so I, I would say that there were different perspectives, and people were honest, and it wasn't you know it wasn't all total rah-rah it was sort of some people said you know well maybe it's not for you and I don't think marijuana is for everybody I mean alcohol is not for everybody either I mean maybe mashed potatoes aren't for everybody you know? I have had students come up to me on campus already having bought the book oh, and really? saying would you autograph it where can you it? buy it at I could only see it on, M on uh, the High Times site High oh Times. it's in uh it's in Copperfields in Sebastopol. Oh, it is. Oh, good. Uh, last time I had looked, it oh, was okay. it was there on Monday. Okay. I mean, it's in the town of in, in Reader's Books in the town of Sonoma. Okay. It's in the bookstore in Guerneville, uh, River Books. Uh, yeah. I did smoke when I was 25 years old. I ha I but I have not smoked continuously from 25 till my current age. I mean, there were times when. I was not interested in smoking. I lived in, in England for three years, and I didn't smoke any of that time. I didn't, I didn't come in contact with any weed or hashish. I taught in Belgium for a year, and I didn't come into any contact, you know. So I've been in places where there's no marijuana around. Sometimes I go on vacation for a month, and I don't travel with marijuana, and I don't know, I don't go out on the street and try to score in some strange city, so I uh, feel like I do not have a so any kind of a psychological dependency on it. You know. So I was interested in the economy, the marijuana economy, the fact that there was millions of dollars made from growing marijuana and it went into the local businesses. That uh, marijuana growers were buying everything from pickup trucks to toothpaste and all kinds of products and irrigation and pipes and fertilizer and I mean, there's this whole uh, subsidiary industry or supporting industry uh, that's been around since the late 60s, early 70s. Well, by the federal government, the, the Fed's eyes, all, all marijuana is illegal. So even people who are adhering to local and state laws and regulations. So, And I think it's going to continue that way. I mean, the federal government is is going like gangbusters against marijuana, especially in California, but also in Michigan and other, other states that have adopted medical marijuana. They're, uh, they're going to go against landlords who rented dispensaries. And uh, they, there's thousands of dispensaries in California. They can't go after all, all of them, but they're, they, they've got a list and they're going down their list. and. Seems like they're going after the easiest targets first. I mean, they didn't. I noticed they didn't say we're going after the cartels. If they really wanted to do some good, why don't they go after the cartels? Why do they have to like go after the places in Mendocino County that are totally playing it by the book, registered with the sheriff Alvin? So, uh, and Obama is a big disappointment. Here's somebody who smoked pot when he was a teenager and got high and said, yeah, the whole point was to get high. Here's somebody who's really going to back off, and uh, he hasn't. And people in New York would tell me, at, like at high times, and uh, normal uh, orga organizations that have been lobbying for the end of the pot prohibition for a long time, would, they would say, oh, well, you know, Obama's like backed off and it's like going to be clear sailing. And I said, well, I'm here, I'm on the ground. I'm, this is the battlefront here and 
Sonoma and north of here, and they're still they're still busting the feds are here, and their D DEA is here, and they're busting people. And people said, "Oh, that's news to me." And then finally, it sense sunk in, and they they saw, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." You know, they the war goes on, the war against marijuana goes on. Sad to say, waste of huge waste of money, manpower, really. Potential income. Yeah, I mean, and there's also. There's a huge prison industrial complex. There's, there's since 1970, there's been 200 million people arrested on marijuana charges. You got to put them away in prison. You got to build prisons for people. You got to hire wardens and prison guards, and you have to have judges and prosecutors. I mean, it keeps the, that whole law enforcement, prison industrial complex industry going. The arrest of people for marijuana. You and young people see their parents intoxicated and sick, poison, really, alcohol poisoning. And then the same people turning around and saying, you know, marijuana is a dangerous drug, you know. Nobody's ever died of a, as far as I know, nobody's ever died of a marijuana overdose.